Hi, everyone. I'm Clarice Avalos. And I'm Max Grossman. We're from Radiant Solutions, and we'll be presenting Map Rules, an application that generates guided instructions, custom tagging presets, and validation rules for mapping campaigns. First, we'd like to start out with a roll call to see who's in the room. Raise your hand if you have ever been a campaign manager. Great. Yay, Matt. <laughs> These are the people who have created instructions on what people should map and how they should tag them and been responsible for making sure a campaign gets completed in a timely manner. How many mappers do we have? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so you have made edits in OSM by adding features and tags. Do we have any new mappers? Yay. Awesome. So you may be just getting your feet wet. Um, we've created this to help make it as easy as possible for you to get started. How about validators? Great. So these are the people who might invalidate edits um, if the feature hasn't been mapped correctly. Do we have any other developers in the room? Great. So these are the people developing tools to help map in OSM. Data in OSM is possible because of all of you. But the difficulty with crowdsourcing is each and every one of you have to communicate with each other to do what you need to do. Map Rules provides a consistent way to share information that can be used while mapping and validating. When we do a mapping campaign, there are some questions that all of us ask. What should I do? As a campaign manager, what features do I want to be mapped? As a mapper, what features should I map? And as a validator, what features need to be checked? How do I do it? As a campaign manager, how should I write clear instructions so that contributors know what is expected? How will I tag features as a mapper? And how can I, as a validator, make sure features are mapped and tagged correctly? Did I do it right? As a campaign manager, am I making sure it is clear to mappers and validators how best to map and tag features in compliance with best OSM practices? As a mapper, is my work correct and does it meet the requirements? As a validator, am I checking for the right things when I review somebody's work? We will first show you how this information is shared in Tasking Manager by interpreting instructions for the campaign, then show you how we have integrated map rules into Tasking Manager and the editing tools to better communicate this to people when they are mapping and validating. At the time, we were developing this in uh, TM2, but we look forward to integrating it with TM3. So what should I do? This is typically found in the instructions, along with the focus of the campaign, and guidance on best OSM practices. Campaign instructions and tasking manager are typically written in some variation of what you see on the screen. Now I want to emphasize variation because everybody writes them differently. This one is for a hurricane relief campaign. Listed um, are the features, roads, hospitals, schools, sports fields, tags for those features, which consist of keys like highway and values, which might be primary, secondary, tertiary, or residential as well as some suggestions like surface and one-way tags where applicable. You'll notice that some of these are links, which lead to even more details about how to tag and map the feature. Those links lead to map features on OSM Wiki, which detail best practices on what tags to add, the geometry to use, and suggested tags to use for the feature. Looking closer, it shows that this feature must be mapped using a node or area. It also lists the combinations of other tags that might be used for the feature, like the name, opening hours, etc. Sometimes you will also find ways that campaign managers try to keep people on track by limiting which features should be mapped. Here it says adding only roads with a tag highway equals secondary, and do not map tracks, only residential and unclassified. Thanks, Clarice. Um, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, so once it's been figured out what it is we want to map, the question becomes, how do I do it? How do I interpret these instructions and map them so the features are mapped tagged correctly? Uh, you might find yourself using stock tagging presets, which are built into the OSM or the JOSM and ID editor. Uh, you might build up those features tags manually, adding them one by one. Or you might be brave, read some uh, preset spec documentation, and write some preset XML or ID JSON uh, 
configuration to have your own custom presets in your editor of choice. So let's go through these options. First, you might find yourself in a uh, campaign where you're mapping secondary roads. If you're using ID in this scenario, you select secondary road, and you might find that this parfait of fields is way more than what you're really interested in. Say, for example, turn restrictions are important. You may then go ahead and say, let me search for those, uh, for a preset for turn restrictions, but oh goodness, I can't find it. Also, just note, uh, a similar sort of wide net of preset fields is also found in Jocelyn. So you may uh, listen to someone smart like Matt Gibb and say, I'm going to tag a feature one by one with the things that are important and then use some Jossum hotkeys to go ahead and map additional features. This is an awesome solution, but certainly it takes some training, and if we're trying to reach everyone with these mapping campaigns, that also might not be ideal. Um, okay, that was just my GIF being my GIF. Uh, you could be very, very brave and go ahead and try to write some preset XML for Jossum, and there's a similar sort of spec for writing these for ID, uh, but as I would suggest, that's kind of hard to write, and also there's a back and forth of trying to test to make sure it works, and again, that's not necessarily the best workflow we want if we want to make specific mapping easy uh, and approachable by anyone who joins our campaign. Also, you may find yourself in a bit of a where's Waldo scenario with ID, or Jocelyn, sorry, uh, where finding the preset or trying to tell campaign contributors where that preset is uh, can be a little bit of a wild goose chase. Um, Carmen San Diego action going on where you may end up uh, using just the regular UI once you've added that preset. And again, there's still a bit of difficulty finding them. Now to the question of did I do it right? We'll talk about how validation feedback is currently given to mappers by validators as well as validator tools in the editors now. We were motivated to create map rules because of the back and forth that occurred between mappers and validators that added a lot of time to task completion. After a mapper marks a task as complete in Tasking Manager, uh, a validator has to pick it up, review all the features and tags, and write comments about why the edits may be invalid. Then a mapper would read the comments, revise the work, and mark the task as ready to be validated again. Here is a real history of a task that has been passed back and forth between a mapper and a validator, uh, not just once, but a couple times. Getting feedback from a validator is helpful for teaching mappers the correct way to map, but we could reduce the time it takes to mark a task as valid by providing that feedback more immediately as they are mapping in the editors. Uh, so not to shout out Matt Gibb once again, but to, uh, be on his train, we do have the tools. So uh, in ID, there are validation checks that exist, but uh, in this thought piece, let's say I am part of the South Jersey Surfers Guild, which is an imaginary guild that, as a South Jersey surfer, I am part of. Um, and let's say I'm in a mapping campaign for making bakeries near the beach that I want to have as my post-surf snack. Browns is a great choice. And let's say I do some map features research and recognize that there's um, or, or the campaign manager looks and uses map features to say, we're going to map these bakeries as shop equals bakery. There's also a proposed idea that I found I, last night of using craft equals bakery. And I may go ahead and, uh, if you can see, tag Browns as craft equals bakery. Uh, if a campaign manager doesn't have a way to make sure that I'm conferring with the tagging that we're all agreeing upon, uh, if I click validate or upload, and ID should try to do some validating, Currently, those validation tools aren't made to uh, look for incorrect tags per some spec that we decide upon. Same would go on with Jossum. Um, also super hard to see, but craft equals bakery. And by way of seeing that that validation errors layer is loaded, that means validation's been run. And again, nothing going on to say that browns should be shop equals bakery. Um, now, we may be, um, brave again and try to write some map CSS. So map CSS is kind of the cascading style sheets for web sites that has been applied to maps. Um, and we've left South Jersey and now we're in the Czech Republic. Um, and in this scenario, we're trying to create some map CSS checks for uh, the address system in the Czech Republic. Here, if you can see uh, this 
somewhat complex set of rules that are present. Uh, these are looking for checks to make sure that a feature has a house number, it has a street number, and a conscription number. Uh, so I think the idea that I'm trying to convey here is these are great, but to write these on your own and to figure out the documentation of how this all works takes some time and, again, not our ideal use, or, or not ideal, I guess. Ah, more where's, where's Waldo. Um, again, with Map CSS and Jocelyn, it's kind of hard to find that. That's all we have. As we try to illustrate, there are many powerful mechanisms and tools already in place, but they are not easy to customize or use together. So we made Map Rules. Map Rules is software that makes it easy to generate custom presets and validation rules. It improves knowledge sharing by enforcing a standard format for creating campaign instructions. With Map Rules, campaign managers can generate presets and validations seamlessly with one interface, and it simplifies the campaign experience so that mappers only use the presets important to their mapping task. Ah, yes, the one developer slide. So this is a quick architecture of how it will work. Um, there's a UI where you can write these instructions, which we'll show you and go over in a second. We save that in a database behind an API, and then um, so you open up a task that we have integrations in Tasking Manager, and you click, say, I want to edit an ID. Those will go request the presets and the validation rules, uh, and with some with a fork of ID that we have and a um, plugin for Jossum, those will be available and put in the places needed so that when you hit upload or however you go ahead and do your mapping, it'll check against the tags that were uh, suggested as the valid mapping tags for the campaign. Here's the streamlined process that MapRules provides for you all. First, the campaign manager creates standardized instructions with attribution rules and suggestions. The geometry and attribution guidelines from the instructions then get used to create tagging presets for mappers to use. This will help reduce attribution errors by guiding mappers as they map to use the right tags and values on features with the correct geometries. The requirements from the attribution instructions also create validation rules, which will help catch any attribution errors on features mapped. Previously, instructions were created with a free form input box, and that's what caused variation in how those those instructions were written, making it hard for campaign managers to create detailed instructions and hard for mappers and validators to find what they need to map and validate against. Formatting and links to details about tagging had to be manually created using Markdown, which just an, was just another thing that campaign managers have had to learn. So we, we created this form that will guide campaign managers to indicate the features, geometries, and tags needed for the mapping campaign. Putting all of these in the map rules configuration empower us to use this information for creating presets when they say a feature may have certain keys and values, and validation rules when they say that it must have certain keys and values, or should not have certain keys and values. We have boiled down some of the complex logic that you saw earlier to these simple phrases and brought the power of creating custom presets and validation rules to the fingertips of campaign managers. You'll see that we have taken the most popular keys and values and tags most commonly used in combination with them from tag info to show up as suggestions to help managers fill out guidelines. To maintain focus in the campaign, we also have a section to indicate features that should not be mapped because it's not in the interest of the campaign. For example, you might want them to map bridges but not necessarily get distracted and start mapping all the waterway, rivers, and streams or natural features they encounter along the way because that would take away from the priority of the campaign. These instructions on what not to map would become validation rules and alert mappers if they have mapped something that was outside the scope of the campaign. Everything the campaign manager entered gets outputted as these standardized, formatted instructions for the mappers and validators to see. These instructions are not only a clear-cut way for mappers and validators to see the guidance, but like we have mentioned before, they drive the creation of presets and validation rules to be used in the editors. So presets will be created for each feature with the fields indicated. In this scenario, there will be a hospital preset created. The identifying tag of building equals hospital will automatically get applied when using the preset. This preset would only be allowed to be applied to the geometry indicated. Fields like name, emergency, and healthcare were shown in the preset along with possible values. In this example, 
Only clinic, doctor, hospital, and center will appear as options for the healthcare key, even though typically there are a lot of other tags that could be used there. The validation rule will check if hospitals have the required tag name, um, the required tag name. And it will check that tags that should not be added are not added on the feature. It's demo time, okay. Um, so we are going to show a very naive, but I guess hopefully um, helpful example of what this may look like in the real world. Um, so here we've created a pretend um, post Hurricane Florence mapping campaign. And while, uh, as I found this morning, the Wilmington Hospital is mapped, let's just pretend we're going to find a hospital. Um, okay, so let's select this square. Let's That definitely says ID, I think. So let's open it. Okay, so now we're in ID. Uh, definitely gonna have to do some zooming. Okay, hopefully there's a building underneath us. That the internet is doing its thing. Um, it's the exact opposite of good practice of using the internet during your presentation. Oh, nice, we got some data. Okay. So um, let's close our eyes and imagine we see a hospital right underneath me <laughs> and not a forest. Okay, so I'm going ahead and I'm uh, drawing a super square area. And as you note, uh, ID has this nice way of only showing you presets that are important or, or match the geometry of the feature. And in this case, because we have that short list of presets and we really only have hospital, uh, we basically initialize ID with only the presets that are part of the map rules campaign. So if I go ahead and select hot, which says hospital, those three fields that we said were the valid fields, name, emergency, and um, I believe that is uh, healthcare, yes, which I also can't see, um, are the only thing that are provided. So let's go ahead and let's add a name and we'll just call it Wilmington, uh, if I spell it right, hospital. Emergency is yes, but I'm going to be lazy and not add the healthcare tag. Well, when I go to hit upload, it'll throw this warning that in unreadable text says, this must have the healthcare tag. Let's go ahead and add that tag, but let's go and what I think this one says healthcare. Um, is that the correct healthcare one? The audience? Awesome. Let's just say um, healthcare is yes, which is not in our set of preset rules, and now when we go ahead, in small text, this is just saying, when you have the healthcare tag, it has to be one of those four tags. So the idea is to uh, create almost like a mini feedback loop that is sort of the back and forth between validators and mappers and bring it right into their face with the with, within the editors. Um, and so let's also struggle through some tiny Jossum. That's Jossum, okay, and I think have Jocelyn here? I do. This is going to be super tiny. Okay, let's zoom in. Definitely a hospital. <laughs> okay, is the tag table there? Oh no. Okay, oh, it's right here. So, aha, I can see it. You can't. How, <laughs> how great. Okay, so then I'll bring this over here. Tag table. I used the building tool. Thank you, Matt Gibb, for teaching me that. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, add just the hospital. And you see that same sort of form appears. Let's just do yes. Let's do one of the correct ones. You noted there's not a name tag. Um, that's a Max Grossman special bug. So I need to make sure that appears. But as you see, uh, tiny again, it's saying, hey, I need a name. You can go ahead and click, um, and I guess just name equals Wilmington, and then validate, wow. Um, so this is a very naive example, I only had one preset just to keep it short and sweet, but you can imagine if there's a collection of features that are important for a mapping campaign, you can you know, go crazy with this and make sure that analysts or contributors or whoever is doing your mapping um, know that this is the correct mapping to do. Oh, and while well, I could stare at Jossum all day, we have a presentation to show. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So 
So as we get on 10 minutes before uh, our talk time should be over, um, these are the backup slides we made. So future work. Okay. So this is just the beginning of what we could do with the map rules. Uh, we hope to make it easy to share map rules uh, with others in case there's a set of commonly used presets or validation rules. Um, and we plan on creating a way for uh, sending the validation errors back to the tasking manager campaign as kind of the reasons why a task was invalidated. That way they could indicate, validator could indicate if there was wrong attribution or incorrect geometry or even provide an interface to say there are missing features and select one from the list of features in the map rules. And? Yeah. So uh, with the first go around, I think the focus was just to make it so the editors could have access to this, but those sort of set of instructions and rules could be maybe added to uh, more robust validation tools. So maybe OSM Went could have an integration where we figure out a way to create a new class in that repo that would make use of um, our map rules. Uh, and the last thing we're interested in is localization. So I'm thinking of uh, uh, like locations, not necessarily the idea of language. So if I'm going into a place where there's a community of people who have used map rules to create a whole bunch of different presets that are the location specific tags that they use, uh, map rules could be a way to present those to new mappers so that what maybe confers with how US mappers map, say, a hospital, something that people in another place who map it differently make sure you're making tags or adding tags that are valid for what the people who are going to use that map, you know, want the tags to be. All right. So do be on the lookout for treats, tr uh, that. <laughs> for tweets uh, for when we release it to be open source. And please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you and how you might like to use map rules. Are there any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Right, here. right there. So I was wondering if you can potentially use this in JavaScript under the like testing manager, so that you can get to like the plugins or we can make them a validation trick for Totally. So there's yes. Yeah. So the question was could we use this not just from a task, but just out of the box with Jocelyn through a plugin? So the way we did the integration was through a Jocelyn plugin. So in terms of reading them and making them available, that button I clicked, that's all the Jocelyn plugin. Um, and then in terms of outside of a task having access to these presets, we have a UI that is uh, in development and that basically would be your hub for how do I just start mapping with these presets wherever. Over here. Um, adding, uh, oh, the, what it would take to take these fork changes and make them available. For Tasking Manager, Clarice is the secret scientist. It's just like a new column in the, in the database table for projects or right. whatever the task is. So uh, when you save the map rule, it'll return, our API returns a config ID and you just save that config ID so that you can make the request uh, to read it later. And then the way that we did it was we just used an iframe. So you could have the UI that we already have for creating the map rules and just, um, just plop it right into your application. And then for ID, uh, if you go to Max Grossman forward slash ID, there's a fork called Remote Presets, and uh, it's just its own class with a lot of tests, so you can kind of see how I did it.
another thing that I would say is that um, as far as the instructions go, there's also two sets of users. There's IT instructions and there's also jobs and instructions. Mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure, like depending on who, kind of similar to the other divisions you want. IT instructions have to be much different than the jobs and instructions. My advice is default to IT, IT instructions, jobs and users can translate. It doesn't work very well. Um, other than that, I think it's a great tool, it's super cool. I would seriously consider how it fits into your identity policy. Um, there will be a lot of pushback in the open street map community from things like uh, they get really mad when you say you can only map these things. Sure. Please don't map this. That's mm -hmm. a huge potential. And I think there's an opportunity for the directed mapping policy too. If this could output the wiki page that I need to generate for my directed mapping project, or at least a portion of that, you know, usually there's some tags and that kind of stuff. I think that would be you know, a huge benefit. Some definition of directed mapping that seems to fit larger and larger. Other than that, I think it's great. I'm looking forward to using that. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think the question was when you are start tagging something and the set of tags don't necessarily fit what you know it needs to be. Was that the question, or did I? Yeah. Um, so the the only restriction on maybe updating those, I would hope the community, like if it's a group of people doing this mapping, and maybe those tags could be updated iteratively. That there's, it's not like when you write the rules once, that's it. They're definitely updatable and. Um, Uh, I see. I don't think we've gotten that far, but that sort of flow is something that sounds interesting, and we'd love to, uh, to use some lingo, take this offline. <laughs> All right. Nothing else. Thank you very much. Make sure to grab stickers on the radiant table. <laughs>